Well, Paul's here, and we are doing our very first ever husband Q&A. Whoa. Yeah. Things got serious recently. Yeah, somebody went from not my husband to my husband. <laughs> not the boyfriend, not the husband. All of a sudden, we can do all kinds of husband videos. And this is the first one. We are here to answer all of your burning questions that you left for us on the wedding announcement video and on Instagram. So stay tuned. Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos, and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is you get to see my community post on your YouTube homepage where I post deals, discount codes, sales, and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. Wait, you mean I should have been subscribing to your channel all this time? Yes. Uh-oh. Now that you are my husband, you are obligated. <laughs> okay, I have pulled questions that you guys left for us on Instagram and on the wedding announcement video on YouTube. By the way, thank you guys so much for all your supportive comments. We have almost 800 comments at the time we're filming this, and all but one of them were very positive and supportive. I've read all of them. Paul's read about half of them, I think. I try to read them and then there's there'll be a hundred more. We're nice. just gonna go in the order of how I have them written down here on the computer, which is why I'm looking down. The first question is from Styled by Gwenny. She has two questions. Hey, Gwenny. Hey, Gwenny. Gwenny says, in 11 years of cohabitation, we have lived together for 11 years, can you both pick a pivotal moment it could be small, that reinforced your togetherness. And she also wants to ask about our an most annoying habits. That's quite a pair of your questions. Well, for me, I'm thinking a pivotal moment. We went to Oregon this summer. Autumn had never been there before. I'd been there many, many years ago, but only up the Columbia River. So it's sort of a first real visit for both of us. You know, we traveled a lot together. We've been to some cool places, but something happened. Uh, it happened with me. There was something about being there with you. You know, we, this will be another question. We got to know each other through photography. We were in this just beautiful photography location of Oregon. Something clicked. It's, it's kind of like, I remember you said, this is where I need to be. Mm -hmm. And although I didn't say that at the time, sometime between then and when we got home, I was thinking, you know, that goes for me too. So I'm going to say something to do with being in Oregon. Yeah, for me, things started changing in Oregon, too. And it had a lot to do with the location, but I was also realizing on that trip, even though we've traveled together so many times, I was realizing how well we get along and how easy it is for us to have conversations, how much we enjoy the same things and doing the same things and going to the same places. Everything was just clicking. It just felt easy and right. It's about as simple as I can say it. That was a pivotal moment. It was like we sort of coalesced at that time for me as well. It was like peanut butter and chocolate. And Gwenny asks about our most annoying habits. So what is what is my most annoying habit to you? <laughs> Expecting that I can read your mind all the time, mm -hmm. which I can't. Sometimes I just, I don't know what you're talking about, and you'll say, well, you know, we talked about that. And, and I deny that we ever talked about it, and I think it was just that she thought that I was reading her mind. And for me, I think yours and I've said this so many times, is just leaving lights on everywhere. I'm constantly turning lights off that I have not turned on, and no one is in the room. Maybe it's because I secretly work for HLNP. They're not going to know what that is. That's the light company. It used to be a long time ago. Mm -hmm. It's not anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. They, they went out of business a long time ago. Now, YouTube has messed with some of the names, so I don't know if this is your correct name. Tony Joe. This says Tony Joe 2011. Congratulations. Love your travel vlogs. How do you find such great places to stay, eat, drink, and visit? I'm going to say that it's really autumn. Autumn is, she is the planner. If we go on a trip, she's the one that starts planning. She researches uh, places to stay. Uh, we love to travel to wine country. A lot of times Autumn will plan these trips around a winery or a group of wineries that are nearby. Of course, photography is always uh, in there. So she kind of 
mixes this all up in her head mixer and she comes up with these wonderful places and usually I don't even know about them until she says well oh well, we, we could stay at this place and you know I think that I know uh, Texas for instance you think I know that all all the hotels and places to stay in Texas but she'll always come up with some Airbnb or something like that that I'm not aware of she's just a natural I mean she just kicks it when she finds us places to stay I don't think you would disagree with that you're, you're the master of that boat. <laughs> yes I am <laughs> I'm, I'm the master planner I think some of them know that too. Uh, when I'm finding places to stay, I usually start with Airbnb, and a lot of those, of course, are independently owned places, but more and more there are companies, and sometimes if you look at the photographs in an Airbnb, they'll have a photo of the sign. Like we stayed in Cannon Beach in Oregon recently over the Thanksgiving break. There was a sign outside this little place we stayed in a shopping retail kind of area that gave me a clue that there was somebody else who was actually actually renting the property and or sometimes it'll be a hotel room and they'll have a sign of the name of the hotel or the condominiums or whatever it may be. In those cases, I look up that place, let's say it's condos, I'll look up the name of the condo and go find them and try to book directly because it's usually cheaper and you don't have all those extra fees that you get from Airbnb. I also just look at Google Maps, search for hotels in a certain area, blow it up and, and look at that that way. The way I do it takes a long time, but I do end up finding really cool places to stay. And we're also really budget conscious about where we stay. Most of the places are under $200 a night, if that's available. Mm -hmm. We went to Maine year before last. Right. There were some places that you couldn't find anything under like 500 a night, so that was rough for us. But sometimes you luck out too. Actually, we lucked out in one of the places there. It was still expensive, but it was up in, uh, what's the national park we ended the trip at? <laughs> no, I can't remember it. The big island. That one. Starts with an A, right? Help us out, folks. <laughs> Acadia? Acadia. Acadia. Acadia National Park. Right. We couldn't find any hotels there, and part of the reason was we had booked a little late, but part of the reason is Maine is just packed in the summer. We were looking for places in Acadia, and like a a Holiday Inn, let's say, that we may normally stay at that's under 200 a night, they were like $700 a night, and there's no way we're paying that. So we ended up finding a glamping place to stay, and oh, they... Oh, boy. That was amazing, right? And they had just opened, like, a few months before that, so their rates were super low. I mean, they, they were still high, but in comparison to other things around, they were super low. They were three or four hundred something a night, which is a lot more than we usually pay, but oh my god, was it worth it. It, oh. was, it was such a glamorous... Like, I've looked for other glamping experiences for us to stay since then. I've never found anything that compares to this place. It was amazing. I will link them below. She really hit the jackpot. Uh, it was wonderful. I don't know if everyone knows what glamping is, glamorous camping, but it was glamorous. It was superb. My husband knows what glamping is. <laughs> <laughs> he, he can even define it. <laughs> So yeah, that's how. And places to eat, um, and that depends. A lot of it will just walk around and drive around and find something. I, it may be something that I've Googled ahead of time. And in terms of places to visit, like cities to visit, that's a lot of research ahead of time too. Yeah, some of that, uh, in fact, the eating places to eat. Autumn usually is a little bit more particular about her food or the quality more. of it a lot more than I am. I'm, I'm the guy who says, oh, okay, fine, I'll go eat there. I can eat anything. And, and I, I tend to be happy wherever she chooses. But the nice thing is, is she always chooses great places to eat and to stay. Yeah, you know, the places that we go. I think the photography sort of feeds into that a little bit. We, mm -hmm. we both inherently know what kind of place we'd like to visit. And so we kind of hone in on that right away. Mm -hmm. We don't go to some place where we can't photograph. The next question is the same question, but this is by AZ Shopping Princess, 4298. And she said, Autumn, how do you find all those hidden gems of places to stay in all your travels? So we just answered that, but I wanted to acknowledge that that person asked that question too. Next question from Marilyn Finn Femme. And this also comes from, looks like Leah L. Noob and Puppy Toes 19. What a great name. Really? They all want to know how and where we first met. Why don't you start? Well, I mean, my story, the way I would tell it is like one sentence. We met at dinner with a mutual friend. We met at dinner with a mutual friend and a, and a bunch of friends that, w that we had dinners with and things like that. It's funny, we, we, we met, we didn't know each other, of course. Very quickly, we found out this shared 
love that we had a photography. You had a business at that time, right? A photography business? Yeah, I was doing wedding photography and some portraits and animal portraits. So the animal portraits were all free. Those were for rescues. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. She knew about my photography, I think, beforehand from some of our common friends. It sounds kind of mundane, but we just started hanging out together around photography. I, I remember there was this place, I think it was Super Salads mm -hmm. uh, in Houston, and we'd go there Every few weeks we decide to meet there and I bring a new lens that I had or she brings some camera that she's looking at or we talk about photography and it was just just the most natural thing that we started going places together to photograph you know well let's go here and photograph this or that it, it just became a very very common thing and I guess it went on for a couple of years right it did it, that yeah we were just friends uh -huh. and we would hang out and talk and we would talk about some really personal stuff too I was going through yeah a lot of bad stuff in relationships at that point Paul was like my dumping ground <laughs> for for listening to all the stuff I was going through and he would give me good advice or at least sympathy and we'd go on photography trips together so we'd have somebody to go with. Beginning of 2012, the end of, well, you know, that, that, that holiday week, uh, Christmas, New Year's of 2011, 2012, things changed. Was it one month after that? Just right around one month after that that we moved in together? We moved in, yes. <laughs> yeah, and we've been living together ever since. That's right, 11 years. So that's how we met. The next question, we'll probably get into a little bit more of that. Mm -hmm. This is the most burning question that people have been asking for a long time, and <laughs> I have avoided answering it. So we're going to talk about this now. That is, well, I'll just read this question. Yeah. This is from Mr. SCT. Leah L. Noob also wants to know. So Mr. says, okay, so I will admit I'm kind of new to your channel the last year or a little more, but the last video I saw with the Q&A, you explained that y'all weren't together as a couple, but loved each other dearly as friends, and were going to continue to live together. When did I miss the change? LOL. So that's the question I keep getting a lot is, hey, I thought you guys broke up. All of a sudden you're married. What happened? What did I miss? And then other people will say, I knew it. It was just a matter of time. I could tell you know, something was going on, or I could tell you guys belong together. Here's the thing. So we did break up a couple years ago. I told you guys that because I felt like you needed some kind of explanation so that you would know why I wasn't calling him the boyfriend anymore, because I used to call him that. And we've been broken up pretty much ever since then until quite recently. Basically, until the day we got married. <laughs> <laughs> Before we got married, so... Let me say this, neither, we've talked about this before we started filming, neither of us wants to go into detail about what happened, that's too personal. I also have students who watch the channel and my personal life to in that depth is none of their business. What I will say is up until the point that we got married, we hadn't gotten back together. We weren't boyfriend and girlfriend again. Like I said in the wedding announcement video, it was a very practical decision. And it really kind of started in Oregon, like we said, where something clicked and changed for both of us. I know at least for me, I started feeling closer to Paul. We weren't really, correct me if, I, if you feel like I'm wrong, we weren't really getting closer together, like there was nothing going on. We were hanging out and feeling closer together. I don't know, I just, I felt closer to him since Oregon. Mm. If you go back and watch the wedding announcement video, you'll see why we decided to transition into marriage and the, the reasoning behind that. I stand by that as the reason that we got married. More about that than it was about, it was more about the practical legal stuff than it was about the relationship. Mm -hmm. But the relationship has also been built and is there. You know, we grow up in this society where we watch movies and we expect everybody to behave that the way people behave in rom-com movies or whatever. You know, people meet, they fall in love, oh my God, you know, it's just crazy in love and can't be apart and all this. But that's not the way life works. You know, to try to fill in some of the gaps, uh, you know, living together as, as we have for a, for a decade, I'm sure that some of you will agree. It's very common if, if someone is living together that long, it can go through all sorts of valleys and, and mountains. You know, the, the relationship can shift quite a bit. That's a long time. I have to agree with Autumn. It was something to do with when we went to Oregon it, and it has a lot to do with what happened to a family member, which I think you you 
already alluded that you you mentioned that in, in the, the, the wedding video. Mm -hmm. So to some, you know, it, it, it may sound a little bit like, well, wait a minute. The reason people get married is because they're just so in love with each other and they can't be without each other. It's not always that way. Yeah. We love each other. Yeah. We've loved each other for so long. It's almost just like a natural thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know how to explain it any better than that. Uh, I'm at a loss for words for once. <laughs> no, you're not, but okay. <laughs> Another thing that I forgot to mention that is part of the practicality of getting married, I didn't mention it in the wedding video, is that we are moving to Oregon mm -hmm. and we don't really know anybody. I know a few subscribers who I haven't met yet and have been talking to, but we're basically going up there on our own. So having that relationship be legal could potentially help us in various ways. And we've been told that by many people, you know, just yeah. for legal reasons, tax reasons, get married guys <laughs> I've regretted it a few times but oh have you <laughs> no I haven't I'm, I'm enjoying it it's fun I'm gonna go to another question that I don't have written down here today oh my gosh I just realized this is our two-week wedding anniversary we're gonna have to pop the champagne I'll pop another one <laughs> so in preparation for this video I had texted Yota Style and Dawn Loves Couture and Winnie BLV to see what questions they might have for us. And what they wanted to know is, does it feel any different being married? That's a good question. And, yeah. and we have talked to each other about that. I mean, starting the day after we got married, it really doesn't feel like we're married. It's, it's again, I don't know exactly how to describe it. I told her the other day, I said, you know, the, if I could come up with one word, uh, how I feel about being married to you, it's contentment. Mm -hmm. That means a lot to me. That's one way that I feel different. Not that I didn't feel content with her before we got married, but there's something about the fact that we're now husband and wife. It's going to sound corny. It's a cozy feeling. I just feel cozy and warm and content. Mm -hmm. To me, it's a yes or no answer. It mostly feels totally the same because we've lived together for 11 years. Mm -hmm. We're still living together. Nothing really has changed. But sometimes I do feel differently. I feel a little closer to you and it's more of a sense, and Dale has talked to me about this privately too, it's more of a sense of being a team that we have you know, we've chosen to live together for 11 years. We've chosen to have our friendship and our relationship and whatever it's ebbed and flowed and been. Marriage means we've chosen each other for the rest of our lives, made a commitment to each other that you're the person I want to be with. I'm the person you want to be with. We're here for each other. We're here to support each other. And Paul supports me like nobody else, like more than I could have ever asked or dreamed of. He, he's just like the best support, you know. He listens to me babble on about handbags like all the time and all the things I'm thinking about of YouTube. You look like you have something you're about to say. I'll pay you the 20 bucks after. Okay. It means a lot to me to know that he chose me and he wants to be here with me to the degree that he is signing a paper that, by the way, was such an easy process. Oh my gosh. Getting married is so easy <laughs> uh, as far as the legal, the paperwork and all that stuff, but apparently getting divorced is much more difficult and expensive. You know that because you've been divorced before. So to go into that knowing <laughs> knowing that, that the way out is very difficult, you know, just all of that. It, it's... Mm -hmm very meaningful. That was a shock to me about how easy it was to get married on New Year's Day when everything is closed. Camp. Well, that's only because we did it at home and had my mom officiate. Well, that, that was yeah. the point. That was the point. You don't have to go to a church. You don't have to go to the, you know, to the local uh, office of anything. You can yeah. do it right there in your home. I was just stunned at how easy it is to get married. Maybe there's a message for, for some of you people out there. <laughs> well, a lot of people have said that they've done similar things. Yeah, in, yeah. In I remember comments. that in the yeah. comments. Right. Yeah. I, I I think what we do with the smaller, more intimate weddings is a lot more common than people may think. Another thing, as I've been learning more about advantages of being married in terms of legal stuff and societal stuff, and this really bothers me because I've never th thought about being married before, so I've never paid attention to this. Married people have a lot of advantages that non-married people don't have, and society in many ways and the law in different institutions are set up to benefit married people in many ways over those who choose not to be married. That's not fair. <laughs> um, or over people who aren't allowed to be married, which is even more unfair. 
Right. Yeah, just wanted to say that, that I'm, I'm disappointed in the system. Married people shouldn't get special treatment. Next question, Rhonda Z. Frazier asks, was, was my mom and sister surprised? And she says, I always thought, she always thought we should be married. My mom and sister, so we told them separately. We very casually mentioned it to my mom once at her house and we were just like, and we hadn't decided to get married at that point. We were just like, we're thinking about getting married. And she was like, oh, okay. And so she did seem a little bit surprised, but then she acted cool. The way we told my sister, so my mom already knew, my sister came into town for Christmas. We got her, uh, got the two of them up in my mom's bedroom and we had gotten our marriage license just that morning or the day before and we had it in an envelope and I handed the envelope to my sister and I said look this is kind of awkward because it's the holidays that you know it's Christmas but you're in town and I needed to do this in person so here you've been served <laughs> Oh my God, those <laughs> so, words. Yeah. <laughs> so she pulls the paper out and she's like, she looks confused, but she figured it out pretty quickly because it says certificate of marriage and has her name on it. And then her husband, we told him separately, it, like all together, but at a different time later in the day. He he acts real cool. He was just like, oh, okay. He, he didn't react much. I, I do remember this about your mom. Uh, I, I've really been a member of the family for all these years, you know, not mm -hmm. officially, but an unofficial member of the family. And there was at some point she said, well, it's about time. <laughs> Did she? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if she wrote that in a, in a text to me or if she said it to me, but she said, it's about time. Yeah. Heidi Carpa, 2278, says, joy, joy, joy at hearing your news. Question, how have your YouTube clan taken the news? Um, really well. And I told them before, I told you guys, of course, I told people in my personal life first. But not very long before, we, I think Yota is the only person I told before we actually got married. I had mentioned to Dawn and Winnie that we were thinking about it or maybe planning it, but I didn't tell anybody the day we were ha it was happening. I may not have even told Yota that. I don't recall that you did. But yeah, afterward, did we keep the day for ourselves and not tell anybody except like my mom and sister and then we started telling people the next day? I think that's how we did it. Pretty sure that's how it worked. Yeah, yeah I think so. They yeah. were excited and I think Yota said it's about time. She said when she and Keith visited us last spring break, they felt like we belonged together. What do they know? <laughs> Shamrock girl, hi. She says, "What did your students say?" My students, uh, my students don't know unless they watch the video. I don't talk to them about my personal life, so I haven't told them. I do keep getting comments on my ring, though. This is the engagement ring. My wedding ring is still being sized. I do. It, it's eye catching, especially when there's the right light. So I get. Oh yeah, he has a ring too. Um, I keep getting comments on my ring. Pamela Michael says, Oh, Autumn and Paul, what a lovely story. Congratulations on your marriage. Well done. I could listen to you speak all day, Autumn. Thank you. What a beautiful venue you created. How lovely. Both your attires, your rings, your witnesses, and your mom as referent. Did I miss anything? The trip to Galveston was so dreamy as well. Amazing. Again, best wishes forever. And oh, are you changing your last name? Just curious. Love you and your channel so much. Thank you for all the compliments. I appreciate that. Am I changing my last name? Here's what I told Paul when that came up. I said, why would I change my last name? I already have a name. I don't need yours. That's my response. Sherry Cohen, congratulations. I'm so, 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 so happy for both of you. You had a beautiful and meaningful wedding. I love that your mother officiated and the dogs were part of it. What about Vincent? That's the question I'll mm -hmm. answer in a second. It's about the marriage, the commitment, not the one day extravaganza. I myself didn't want to be a princess for one day. I wanted to be a queen for the rest of my life. I like that. You should remember that. But yes. That means I can be a king. Yep. All happiness to you forever. Thank you so much, Sherry. So what about Vincent? Vincent. <laughs> Vincent. <laughs> I don't know, I thought about how to incorporate her into the ceremony in some way. I couldn't come up with anything. I tried at the very least to get her on my hand and get some photographs with her because we did some photos after the, the after the ceremony. She would not come to me. She wanted to, she was backing away and she wanted to bite me if I tried to get her. I'm pretty sure it was because I had a veil on and she wasn't used to that and it made her nervous. So. And even then, if, if somehow she'd been able to get the bird like between us or something for a, a shot, you've heard Autumn talk about uh, how the birds bond with a human being. And so there's a mate and there's bait. 
And so if we had tried anything like that during a wedding ceremony, uh, she probably would have gone for me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh, she was in the room though, at least. Mm -hmm. She was there. She was there. <laughs> I love this one. Oh yeah, this one. I forgot to pull the bags, but Maru in motion. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Says, congratulations. So happy for you both. What purse did you wear? How did I not talk about that in the video? What's wrong with you? Man, the, the wedding <laughs> announcement, I totally forgot to mention that. You stay right here. I'll go grab the two bags that I wore that day. That's a great question. <laughs> I didn't wear a purse. Here it comes. All right, I'm back. I had two wedding bags. One was really more the engagement bag. So we were engaged for just over a week. No, actually the, the official engagement was just under a week because it was on Monday and we got married on Sunday. Crazy week. Once that happened, once it was official, I wore a white top every day from that first day through the wedding day. And I carried this bag every day. This is the one that I got at that little French shop over in Montrose Collective that I showed you guys in Vlogmas. This is made from a Chanel fabric. And someone asked me, is there any kind of proof or documentation that this fabric is from Chanel. Not that I know of. I'm just trusting that this French company is being honest. And then the day of the wedding, we went out to brunch afterward and I carried this. My Chanel turquoise reissue 226 clutch. I was about to say since Roxy didn't go to brunch with us, but she actually did. We took the dogs to brunch with us. We did. <laughs> we picked a restaurant <laughs> where we could take dogs. But this was blue. Roxy was my something blue official but this was another something blue to carry and it's Chanel so you know if you have a uh, if you go to a brunch after your wedding you have to take your best man and your bridesmaid and we did we did maid of honor maid of honor yeah what do I know yeah nothing not much <laughs> Thank you. You know enough to have married me. What were you thinking? That brings us to the end of the questions, which means it's the end of the video unless you have something else to talk about. You had an announcement, right? I do. Didn't you? No. Okay. Never mind then. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for your questions. Thank you again for all your support. All the positivity and support was much appreciated. Thank you guys. Thanks so much. And if you want to send wedding gifts, the address is 